What's up, you guys, and welcome to a whole new episode of Tony Approved. And just like that, I am back with a whole new video. I have started off my concert tour experience for 2024 with none other than Megan The Stallion. I recently went and seen her in Tampa, Florida during her Tampa stop on the Hot Girl Summer Tour. And before I get started, not only do I need you to like and subscribe to this channel so you can stay in the know of all of the concerts that I have planned out to go to this year, but I also want to shout out the Tampa area. I've really been enjoying Tampa the last few times I've been in the city. Um, I went to see Beyonce and Chloe there last year and we went out and we got some good food while I was in Tampa and I love me some good food. I want to go back to 7th and Grove. That's why I went this time. I had chicken and French toast. Oh my goodness. It was so good. So if you're ever in Florida, talk to the Tampa area because Ybor City, which I didn't get a chance to go to on this trip, but that'd be lit too. But anyways, I'm getting off topic. So before we touch down in Tampa to see Megan, of course, there was a few things that was going on online. For starters, she had just dropped her verse to the Sunday Service remix with Lotto and, and Flo Millie. I meet the goalpost when it's moving. They say I can't, then I do it. Your favorite rapper might not like me. I personally love this remix. I love it. Shout out to Lotto. I think she does a really good job with her future cho her feature choices for her songs. Flo Millie came in on the song Stepping On Next, and Megan matched that energy by coming on some real pimp-ish. So I love, love this remix. We listened to it most of the time while we was down there in Tampa, and I've had it in heavy rotation along with Boa. It's actually making me like Boa a little bit more because I really kind of was still more into his. Boa wasn't really pulling me in as much. Like the beat, but just wasn't really pulling me in. And then also... It was this tweet that Megan set out responding to the rumor that there is an AI adult film of Megan Thee Stallion flirting, floating around on the internet, and she is just getting sick of people attacking her while she's up. I'm really curious to see how this situation actually turns out. But to be honest, when we got to that sold out arena, nobody cared about none of that negativity. And it actually made for an even better show because Megan admitted several times while she was on stage that she wasn't really feeling her best because of the, some of the things that was going on. But we still had a really, really great show. There was some positive and some negatives to this experience. For starters, love the fact that it started on time the way it was supposed to. The doors open at, I think it said that the show was supposed to start at 8. Glorilla was on stage by 8.15, 8.20. Missed a little bit of her opening set at the merch stand, trying to get me a t-shirt. This is my hot girl summer shirt. I decided I was going to make sure I get a shirt every time I go to a show. Has the tour dates on the back. And here's one of the negatives that I ran into. They sold out of the tour books. And I was told that the tour books was really beautiful, like magazine photo shoots. Like, ugh, I hate that. I hate going to a show and not being able to get a tour book. That was like a, ugh, strike one. But Glorilla definitely was an excellent opening act. This is my second time seeing Glorilla and her improve her stage presence has definitely improved. She has more hits to perform now than, than the first time when I seen her. And people in the audience was really rocking with her. You know how sometimes you have an opening act and everybody be walking around and talking to each other, not paying attention? No, they was in there screaming, Yeah, Glow! Just like me. Yeah, Glow! <laughs> And she is super, super fine. She was fine when she first came out, but when she came out that second time, I ain't get no video of it, but when she came out that second time, she had this black number and her little cheeks was just a moving when she was dancing to want to be with Megan. I was just like, okay, Chloe, we see you, girl. The atmosphere was real, real cool. You know, people was in there getting their little puff, puff pass on. And not too long after Glow got off the stage, Megan was right on. Now, one of the things that I did feel kind of like slanted about with coming to the show was the fact that Megan's album doesn't come out to the 28th. So it's like, girl, my show is on the 8th. We literally are going to get all of the songs that we haven't seen you perform. I mean, we're still going to get good songs because this is your first tour. But we would love to got we love to have a great experience by having all of the songs on your album. But she's actually pulling, taking a page out of Beyonce's book and dropping her album in the middle of her tour before she goes overseas. Beyonce actually did the same thing back in 2012, 13, some along those lines when she released 
her surprise album Beyonce, she actually did that while she was still on tour promoting her four album once it concluded in North America. That's when she dropped the album, then went overseas to perfect it and came back and actually gave us another summer tour on the run, which I'm hoping that Megan took a page out of that book as well. Even with the opening of the show, the way Megan popped up was given I am Sasha Fierce. And I'm just like, yeah, girl, the Beehive is here to represent for you. So we love the fact that you are just showing all your inspiration from Beyonce and how much you love her. Even when it comes to her set design, I feel like that was kind of remnants of Renaissance, but she still made it her own. It was big enough for her to dance in the middle of the circle and had like these glow lights on it. I really like that a lot. Now, when it comes to the set list, Megan performed a lot of stuff that I wanted to hear. She performed Megan's Piano. I love the fact that she opened up with his because I was excited to hear that. She performed Plan B, which I was excited to hear. <laughs> She even gave us cash-ish, which I was a little nervous that she wasn't going to give that to us but because of her, everything that happened with the baby. But she still gave it to us, and I was super excited about that. If you owe day one hottie, she definitely gave a lot of stuff from the first and second mixtapes and stuff. She actually pulled me in around the time of Riller. So the Tina Snow and the album before that, she kind of lost me. But of course, she was performing those songs. Um, That was also another negative that I realized at the show. Like, I really do know Megan's music, and I like it, but I don't always know her lyrics. So sometimes she'd be singing a song I like, and I'm like, <gasps> oh my god! And she had real moments with her fans. Like there's a moment during Cobra. There was a moment during Cobra on the show where she really like had a touching moment and almost kind of broke down in tears from all the negativity that was going on. And I think she was really more overwhelmed by the fact that we didn't give, we didn't care about none of that. We was excited, we were her own in a sold out arena and ex and enjoying her moment and enjoying this moment in life and happy and proud to be here to celebrate her. <laughs> I can understand why she was overwhelmed because it was a lot of love in that building and everybody was really enjoying themselves and having a good time. Even when it comes to the fans that was in the pit, Megan was stopping, taking people's phones, twerking on them, signing autographs. What's your Instagram name? In fact, if this, if you were a huge Megan fan, this was probably the best tour for you to be in the pit because she was really stopping the show and, and signing autographs, taking pictures, receiving all of her flowers. Gonna give her so many flowers. Not gonna lie, a couple of times during the show, it was kind of like, okay, 
I guess we'll wait until she finished. But it was like no real negative because we were excited to see her doing that. You know, another page out of Beyonce's book, you know, interact with your fans on the front. That's how you that's how you grind and build um that unwavering fan base. Or should I say hottie base? I loved, loved, loved the fact that Megan did not forget about her song that was on the soundtrack of Queen and Slim. I can't think of what the name of it is off the bit, but I love that record. It's a nice little bounce record. She get letting them do a little booty shaking contest while she played that record. <laughs> So I was happy that we got that on the set list because that's one of my jams. And overall, I really, and when the show was over by 11 o'clock, we was in the parking garage getting our stuff out of there. So it was definitely a cool experience. No drama. It was a vibe. A lot of, I knew a lot of people there. My cousins was there. My brother was there with his girlfriend. I went with my friend Deidre and then her cousin was there. So I had friends everywhere, but didn't run into anybody. We was rushing, trying to get to our seats, which speaks volumes because most, like I said, most people don't care about their open accent, but Glorilla, we was, we was trying to see. Based off of the set list and the fact that Savage is at the end, what I'm hoping and foreshadowing for Houston's show, since she has two, is that she'll have Beyonce come out. I would love to have Beyonce come out for both shows, but if they're knowing Beyonce, she probably might only hit one, give them a nice little two-step of hips tick tock when I dance, and then be on her way. Would love, love, love to see that. And shoot, she can come out again overseas on the last stop of the show. So yeah, that was my hot girl summer tour experience. I'm really thankful that I took this trip because this trip worked really, 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 really well. You know, everybody went with it was a vibe. We all got along. There was no issues, no problems. And things just was working themselves out perfectly. So it was a great start to my concert life for the year. I know for sure I'm going to see Usher in October, but I'm thinking about seeing one more artist this year maybe but i gotta see because i'm supposed to be going on a cruise in december and you know gotta count my coins and make sure everything is stacked up just in case beyonce decides to hit the road next year but are you planning on going to see megan Thee Stallion? did you go see her what was your favorite thing and if by the time you're watching this video her album is out drop down in the comment section and let me know your top three songs i hope you enjoyed this video and i will be back soon with more content until next time god bless